Hi everyone, welcome to Lost Wax. Today I'm excited to bring to you a super cool modular knight armor costume system that you can make at home from a foam floor mat and some hot glue. What I love about this armor is that all the parts are removable and it's made so that it can fit a bunch of different sizes. So I feel like it's gonna be very, very versatile for so many things. I do have a pattern available to go along with this tutorial and you'll find the links in the description below or if you're lucky, at the end of the video. All right, let's make this thing. All right, you're gonna to wanna to remove any airplanes from your printer, and then you can print off the pattern. Just make sure that it's set to print at actual size, otherwise it could shrink your pattern a bit and that would be frustrating. While that's printing off, go find yourself some clear tape and a window or a light box. Normally I tape my patterns together on a window, but I'm doing this one at night, so I'm gonna use a light box. It's as simple as pressing a button and pressing it again. And maybe one more time. And boom, light box. You can measure your print guides to make sure your pattern has been printed to the correct scale, and then tape the pattern together, lining up the alignment marks and taping with your tape and your fingers, leaving you with a bunch of pattern pieces that need to be cut out with your scissors. Take it away, scissor cam. Now most of these pattern pieces are going to be used at least twice, so I actually cut out a second set so I could see how to lay them out on my foam. Now it's time to do a whole bunch of tracing. It's a good idea not to use a standard ballpoint pen here, because no matter how many layers of paint you paint over it, it's still going to bleed through. So I recommend using a silver gel pen or a paint pen. If you didn't print your pattern pieces twice like I did, you'll notice some of the pieces need to be flipped over and traced again to make one continuous piece. Make sure to mark all the alignment points and extend them inward once you remove the pattern piece. You can transfer the alignment marks to the back of the pattern by going over the mark firmly with your pen, flipping the pattern over, and retracing on the back side. Push your pen through the little dots to mark the holes and make sure to label your parts. I like to put a B after the number of any mirrored parts so I can keep track of them. Now it's time to start cutting so grab your foam and go somewhere where you can cut it. Like a table. The key to good foam cuttery is having a really sharp knife, so I'd recommend splurging for some brand new blades before you start working. When you cut, you don't need to cut all the way through the foam in one pass. You'll get a better result with multiple lighter cuts. And as always, don't cut your fingers off. All right, now it's time to assemble the parts for the breastplate and the backplate, which means I need to refine the pattern piece for those strips in the front. I used a sharp skewer to make some indentations along that dotted line to help me line up where those pieces are gonna overlap later. Do this on both of the strips. Now when you stack those front pieces together, the side should match the side of the back piece. And it does. Hot glue doesn't stick as well to the textured side of the foam, because it's kind of been heat sealed when that texture got smooshed into it. So we need to sand it to open up the pores in the foam wherever the overlap is going to be. Some 80 grit sandpaper works really well for this. Apply some hot glue to the point of one of the strips and set the other strip on top, aligning its bottom edge with the overlap lines you drew. Don't worry if the V lines don't match up, just match the long straight lines. Interestingly, our bodies aren't flat, so we'll want the breastplate to curve around our torso. Now at first those outside edges don't appear to match up, but if you start to bend the foam around in a curve, they do. That's handy. So tack those outside edges in place so they line up, and then glue the rest of the overlap, holding the foam nicely curved, until the glue cools. This'll help to kind of bake in the curve on the sides, so we don't have to fight with it later. And that should give you a fancy half belt. Which isn't really good for anything. Glue the breastplate over your stylish half belt, using the exact same technique you just used for the two strips. And because no one likes belt ridge edges sticking into them, grab your knife and holding it at an angle, start sawing away the top edge of those strips of foam. This will help smooth out the transition between the layers. Now take some time to have a cup of tea and be happy with yourself, cause you made a breastplate. Once you're done being happy, it's time to glue the two halves of the back plate together. Glue about 5 centimeters at a time, lining up the alignment points and holding the edges together until the glue cools. Avoid the temptation of letting it go too early, cause then you'll just have to redo it. That's also why I like to use a glue gun with adjustable temperature. That way I can turn the temperature down so the glue cools faster, makes less fumes and burns me less often. If this is your first time using hot glue to glue foam, I'd recommend checking out my hot glue tips video. It could be helpful. 
Then again, it might not. Now it's time to convince the back plate that it wants to curve around your body. So grab a blow dryer and set it to extra hot. Use your blow dryer's super extra hot blowing power and your hands bending power to force the foam to do what you want. Make sure you hold the foam in its bent position until it cools down, helping to lock in the curve. Give the shoulder strap of the breastplate a little curve as well. Just remember not to use your super hot blow dryer in any places where you've already got hot glue, or it could melt your hot glue and you'd be sad. Of course we could stop right here and just have some plain armor, but as we all know, plain armor never did anyone any good, so let's add some details. We'll start off by making a bunch of long strips, so if you can get your hands on a big roll of 2mm EVA foam, that would be perfect. I'm using Cosplay Apprentice's What the Foam here. It's super strong and super red, which is undisputably the best color ever. Make your strips about 7mm wide. I'm using a pair of dividers here to mark it, but you could also use a ruler and a pen. How many strips you'll need will depend on how long they are and what size of armor you're making. So maybe start with this many, and when you run out, cut some more. The main trick with getting the strips on the armor is lining up the corners. So figure out where the bottom corner goes and cut a V in the strip, but not all the way through the strip, just almost all the way through. That way you can bend it and keep a nice sharp corner. Now you can glue down that strip starting with the corner. I don't show it here, but it's good if you can catch a little bit of glue in the V-shaped cutout of the strip as you glue it down. Glue the rest of the strip and cut it off at the point. Repeat the process for all the other strips, cutting nice V's, doing nice trimming, and having a positive attitude. You may also want to adorn your armpits and your neck. If you're wondering how we're going to stick the front and back together, we're going to do it with Velcro. Sand the shoulder straps on the inside of the breastplate. Then cut two strips of the furry side of the Velcro and glue them down on the shoulder strap. If you're using wide strips of Velcro like I did, it's probably not a good idea to let the glue cool on a flat surface like I did. Instead, you want to make sure the glue cools with the shoulder curved so you don't have to go back and heat it up again with a heat gun like I did. Now glue the scratchy kind of Velcro to the side of the breastplate. Scratchy Velcro also goes on the outside of the shoulder straps of the back plate. Now you can attach the front and back at the shoulders and pop it over your head to try it on. Hire an assistant to mark where the breastplate overlaps the back plate. You can use those marks to figure out the length of Velcro strips you're going to need next. I'm cutting my wide Velcro in half for this because I am cheap. Sand where the Velcro is going to go and glue it down. Make sure you use the fuzzy kind for this because if you use the scratchy kind and it sticks out a little bit, it'll probably catch on your clothes. Also remember to keep it curved while the glue cools so it holds its shape. To give the breastplate even more of a breastplatey shape, I'm going to heat it up and stretch it a little bit right where the pecs would be. One of the best tools for this is your knee, so if you have one, it's time to get it out and do some foam stretchery. While we're at it, let's flatten those abs too. It's a subtle difference, but it definitely adds some dimensionality to the armor. And everyone loves a bit of dimensionality. The other thing everyone loves is a fierce creature on their armor, because that shows that they mean business. And what could be fiercer than a winged unilion? Nothing. If you have an inkjet printer, this is a great trick for transferring a design onto some foam. Turn your paper upside down and then use a wet sponge to carefully soak the paper and transfer the ink onto the foam. Interestingly, the printer ink I was using here was from a cheap refill and it didn't work near as well as when I used the actual printer brand ink. Hmm. Once you have the basic Unilion design transferred onto your foam, trace over all the lines with a ballpoint pen, and then go over the lines over and over with excessive amounts of pressure to create permanent indentations in your foam. Now carefully cut out the lion and glue it onto the breastplate. It's pretty hard to glue down all at once, so glue it in sections, starting at the large center part and working your way out to the skinnier bits, like the wings and the feet and the horn. And that's it. You can now awkwardly put on your breastplate. Who knows, you may never want to take it off ever again. Maybe.
All right, if you haven't already, cut out pieces 9a, 9b, and 10. If you have two shoulders, you'll probably be making two pauldrons, so just do everything I say twice. Start with piece 9 and its mirror image 9b. Grab a 4mm leather punch and use it to punch some holes in the places you're supposed to punch holes. Next, grab your glue gun and glue the two halves together, starting at the top and aligning the alignment points. The first part at the top is a little tricky because you're trying to glue two concave curves together, so glue shorter sections at a time and use brute strength to force it to do what you want and hold it way longer just to make sure it's totally cool before you let go. I like to use a variable temperature glue gun so I can keep my glue as cool as possible. That way I don't have to wait as long for it to cool and I don't burn my fingers as much. I also like to use a silicone baking sheet on my work surface because the hot glue doesn't stick to it. You may notice that I'm gluing the pauldron with the smooth side of the foam to the inside and that's okay because I'm going to turn it right side out a bit later. It just makes it a lot easier to glue. Now it's time to glue the V-shaped cutouts together, gluing a few centimeters at a time and then holding it until the glue completely cools. I'm going to show you a real-time example here of how long I hold the edges together while the glue cools. I've never done this before because it just feels like it could be a little bit boring. However, I do realize that a lot of people have trouble with hot glue, so it's good to show. Okay, right here you'll see me wiping away the glue with my finger. I've waited until it's not so hot that it'll burn me anymore, but it's soft enough to rub off. You'll also notice that I didn't stop holding the sides together while I was doing that. Of course, the only reason I can do that is because I have my glue gun set to a low temperature. Otherwise, you'd have to wait a lot longer. I guess what I'm saying is be careful and don't burn your fingers off. And there we have it, 47 seconds to glue a piece of foam. That wasn't so bad, was it? Now grab your inside out pauldron and make it a right side out pauldron. It's also a good time to clean up your seams via vigorous rubbing with some scrap foam. And if your seam has spots you've missed, just shoot some glue in there and give the foam a little squeeze down move. You don't need to get too pedantic about the seams because most of them are going to end up covered by some beautiful swirls. Cut some 7mm wide strips of 2mm thick EVA foam and glue them around the outer edges of your pauldron. Use two separate strips meeting at the points at the top and the bottom of the pauldron. At the top and bottom points, cut the strip in line with the center seam. Then you can match the second strip to the first strip, making a beautiful rim of foam around your pauldron. Trace two piece 21s and one piece 22 on a sheet of 2mm EVA foam. I know they're labeled as piece 15 and 16, but that is no longer correct, so pay no attention to that. Piece 22 should reach from the top to the bottom of the pauldron, covering most of the center seam. And while you've got it there, you might as well glue it down. The two piece 21s will cover up the side seams, glue the base flush to the outside edges and extend the curly bits toward the center. And give the pauldron a little squeeze, cause you love it so much. Okay, now we want to add a flappy bit to the pauldron for extra protection. Punch a couple holes in their appropriate places, then heat up the foam and curve it. Whenever you heat foam, it can release toxic fumes. So make sure you're doing it in a well-ventilated space with some lung protection. Hold your flappy bit nice and curved while it cools so it'll maintain that shape. Then get out your 7mm wide strips again and glue them around the edges. The only place we won't add a strip is along that top concave curve. It would just interfere with the movement of the pauldron. Speaking of movement, let's make some pivoting rivets to attach the flappy bit to the main pauldron piece. I have a whole video on this process so I won't go into a ton of detail, but here's the basic vibe. Grab your hot glue gun, some quarter inch vinyl tubing, heat the tubing, smoosh the tubing, slide the tubing, cut the tubing, heat the tubing, and smoosh the tubing. Nice. Now you could just stop here and wear your pauldron as a hat, or carry on and attach it to the breastplate. Grab 20 centimeters of fuzzy velcro and cut a one and a half centimeter wide strip. Grab some scratchy velcro and cut a strip nine centimeters long and one and a half centimeters wide. Glue the scratchy velcro back to back on one end of the fuzzy velcro. Do some pre-glue sandpaper roughinating on the inside of the pauldron. Place your strip along the center line of the pauldron velcro scratchy side up and you want the spot where the scratchy velcro ends to be 1.5 centimeters below the point of the pauldron. Now glue down that strip but only glue up to two and a half centimeters away from the point of the pauldron. That'll leave you with a short section of single thickness fuzzy velcro giving your strap a little extra flexibility right at that point. That attachment point is going to get a lot of stress on it so let's call in some reinforcements. Cut a nine centimeter long piece of webbing from your child's old car seat and then glue it across the skinny velcro strip two and a half 
half centimeters down from the top of the pauldron. You can even reinforce the reinforcement by spreading glue all the way around the outer edge of the webbing, overlapping both the webbing and the foam. Now if you want to stay simple and leave the pauldron like this, it would work okay. But sometimes the pauldron doesn't stay in place on your arm when you're doing extreme night moves. So let's add another strap. Go to your closet and grab your random fabric box. Carefully sort through your fabric until you find a nice piece of loosely woven cloth. Cut off a nice strip. Spread some water-based contact cement on your sheet of foam. Lay your fabric down on your foam and paint on another layer of contact cement. You can squeegee out any excess with a gift card. The reason we're doing this is to reinforce the EVA foam and we're using contact cement because it stays nice and rubbery and flexible when it dries. To be honest, I'm using wet the foam and it probably doesn't need reinforcing. But if you're using regular craft store foam, you'll probably want to do this. So you don't have an embarrassing pauldron strap accident in the middle of a giant battle against the forces of darkness. Once the glue is totally dry, I have a nice sheet of reinforced foam for my straps. Just remember this is contact cement, so if you don't let it completely dry, it's going to want to stick to itself. Cut a couple 2.3 centimeter wide strips, cut a little 9 centimeter long piece, and glue it to the flappy bit of the pauldron overlapping the edge by 4 centimeters. Don't forget to sand the foam before you glue. Then cut a longer strip according to the pattern and glue it on the other side of the flappy bit, again overlapping 4 centimeters from the edge. Add a little piece of scratchy velcro to the short strap and a longer strip of fuzzy velcro to the longer strap. Before the glue cools on the strap, make sure to curve it so it'll want to go around your arm and not just stay straight. If you're into things that are round, you can round off the ends. Of course, these strap sizes are just a recommendation. It's going to depend a bit on your body size, so make sure you check with your own body before you cut anything. Just watch when you do your second pauldron that you do it all mirror image, so the straps will look the same from the front when you put them on. To install your pauldrons onto your breastplate, locate your breastplate pattern and mark the two ends of the cut line. Again, the placement of this line is just a guide and will depend a bit on your size, so check before you cut. Cut the pauldron slot, cutting through the foam and the velcro on the back. Just be sure to watch out for those fingers because we don't want to get blood on our brand new armor. Use a slightly thicker object to widen that hole, like the back of your knife or a spoon. Now the pauldron strap can go through the slot. This gives you pretty adjustable placement because you can pull it in and out through the slot and slide it up and down. When you've got it how you like it, lock it into place by velcroing the velcro to the velcro, which then can velcro to the other velcro on the back plate. And once you manage to get the straps done up, you can flap your arms as much as you want and those pauldrons will stay in place. Alright, let's make some tassets. Those are the pieces that kind of go over your thighs. Each tasset is made from three pieces, piece four, five, and six. Of course, if you have two thighs, you'll need two tassets. So do everything I say twice. Using a heat gun or a blow dryer, heat up each foam piece and hold it extra curved until it cools, so it'll keep its curvy shape. You'll also want to make sure you've marked the center line as well as the horizontal dotted line, so you'll know how far to overlap the pieces. I just use a knife to cut a little slot along those lines, then I can mark right through the paper onto to my foam. Sand the foam a little bit where the overlaps are going to be both front and back for extra hot glue adhesion. Then you can line up piece 5 over piece 6 and glue a little glob right in the middle just so you can get everything set up and tacked into place. Once that center is cool you can carry on and finish gluing the pieces together, gluing one side at a time and holding them nicely curved until the glue cools. Now glue piece 4 on top of piece 5 doing the exact same thing just with piece 4 on top of piece 5 instead of piece 5 on top of piece 6. I'm pretty sure you get the idea. Here you can see me wiping away some excess hot glue with a piece of foam, which is smart because then it won't burn my fingers. If you know the glue is definitely cool enough, you can wipe it away with your fingers. It's a lot quicker, but also a lot riskier in the burning off your fingers department. And it's time to get out those sweet red 7mm wide strips of craft foam. Now we've already done this on the breastplate but all we had was one corner to make so it was pretty easy to line up. On this one the strip goes around lots of corners so you'll need a good system to get it fitting properly. So as you're happily gluing along and you start coming to a corner, stop about 5 centimeters before you get there. This gives a little bit of leeway to either stretch or compress the foam if you get the mark a little bit off. Make a mark with your fingernail on the strip right at the point of the corner. Corner. Then use some scissors to cut a little V maybe 16 seventeenths of the way through the strip with the point at the mark you made. You want to make sure you cut the same angle on both sides because if you don't, when you bend the strip up, those top edges are just not going to match. That's because of geometry. Of course that's easy to fix by trimming a little bit off the other side. I like to start by cutting the V a bit too small. Then I can trim the sides a little at a time until it's exactly the right 
pointiness. Also, if you got your point in a little bit of the wrong place, you can still stretch or compress the unglued section of the strip to get it lined up. As you're gluing it down, take a little bite of the glue in the mouth of the V. Yum. Now elegantly clean it up with either your fingers if it's cool enough, or with a piece of foam for saferness. One other sweet tip is when you're laying down your strip, push sort of from the inside to the outside. That'll squeeze the excess glue out the outside edge, which is a lot easier to clean up than if it squeezes out the inside edge. Finish off the ends with a bit of guess and check, cutting the strip shorter and shorter until it fits perfectly. Clean it up a bit with some foam rubinating. You can also use the heat from the nozzle of your glue gun to melt any extra glue and smooth it out a bit. This generally works best if your glue gun has a nice flat whitish tip, and that should leave you with a tacit and a bunch of little tiny triangles. Next we're going to take pieces 7 and 8 and hinge them together with a piece of lightweight cloth. Hold pieces 7 and 8 together with the smooth sides facing each other. Spread glue on the two top edges and place your fabric down on the glue. You can use the heat of your glue gun to encourage the glue to totally saturate the fabric. Now you can open it up and apply just a tiny little bit of glue to the outside edge of the seam, making sure you're pressing the two pieces against each other while you're doing it. Now all you need to do is cut off that extra fabric with a pair of scissors and you've got a super cool foam and fabric hinge piece. Attach some strips around the outer edges of piece 8. Add a strip of scratchy velcro on each side of piece 7. Line it up with the inside center of the breastplate. Mark and sand the corresponding locations and glue down two strips of fuzzy velcro. And while we're attaching things to the breastplate, let's grab our tacit and mark the webbing location back of tacit marks. Foam prepping, 17 centimeter long webbing, glued down with 5 centimeters overlapping the foam and extra glue around the edges for reinforcement. Figure out where you want your tacit located, I like mine just barely overlapping that front center flappy piece. Make some vertical marks where the webbing straps line up and some horizontal marks about in the center of that bottom segment of the breastplate. And then cut on the line, making sure to keep your fingers away from under the knife. Now you can slide those tacit straps into the breastplate, glue a 5 centimeter strip of scratchy velcro to the end of the straps, and a 10 centimeter strip of fuzzy velcro to the breastplate above the straps. And you've got yourself some adjustable, removable tacits. Now let's make the leg piece. It's made up of a cuisse, a polane, and a greave, and some polane hinges, but I just made that name up. Let's start by punching some holes in our polane. Heat up the center of the polane and use your knee to form it, which kind of makes sense because that's where it's going to go. You're trying to make the center nice and domey, so kind of dome it over your knee, then grab the edges and stretch it over your knee. Pretty soon it'll look like the best polane you've ever seen. Best polane. Now you can glue the V-shaped cutouts on each side and clean up the seam with some foam scrubbery. These seams aren't going to be hidden, so make them nice and neat. To make the polane look even more fantastic than it already does, we're going to heat and bend back the points at the top and bottom. And there's your polane. Okay, the rest of the leg pieces don't need any gluing, but they do need bending. So let's heat them up and roll them into skinny little tubes. Obviously our legs aren't that skinny, but if we roll them up skinnier than we want them to end up being, then and once they relax a bit, they'll be the right skinniness for our skinny legs. After lots of rolling and squishing and holding and letting cool, you should end up with a bunch of parts that look like this. Now it's time to temporarily assemble the leg, but we need some pivoting hinges for this. These aren't going to be permanent yet, so just flare one side and then cut the other end about 5 centimeters long. Attach the cuisse to the top polane hinge, the top polane hinge to the polane, the greave to the bottom polane hinge, and the bottom polane hinge to the polane. Polane and simple. Now try it on your leg, locating the polane right on top of your knee where it should go. If the greave is contacting the top of your foot, it's too long and needs to be trimmed down. In which case you can go back to your pattern and shorten it according to the shortening lines. Now remove all your temporary hinge rivets and attach some strips of 7mm wide craft foam. They go around all the edges except the ones that are covered up by a piece on top. Then you can reassemble your leg with the pieces of tubing you took out just a few minutes ago. This time cutting them short and heating and forming the other end to make them permanent. I used a drumstick. Okay, let's attach these to our legs with some 1 inch elastic. Mark and sand some spots right near the bottom of the greave, near the top of the cuisse, and in the center of the polanes. 
The elastic lengths will vary depending on your own leg measurements, but here are the lengths I used for mine. For the back of the pole lane, one 16cm and one 11cm strip of elastic, with an 8cm strip of scratchy velcro stuck to the 16cm strip of elastic, and a 4cm strip of fuzzy velcro stuck to the 11cm strip of elastic. Glue the elastic on the pole lane so the scratchy side of the velcro is going to face away from your leg, and the fuzzy velcro will face towards your leg on the opposite side. Spend some time reinforcing the elastic with some extra glue on top and all around the elastic. Just make sure not to glue any of the other parts while you're doing it, or you could be walking kinda stiffly. Next, cut a 16cm and a 22cm strip of elastic, a 7cm strip of scratchy velcro, and a 5cm strip of fuzzy velcro. Glue the longer velcro to the longer elastic and the shorter velcro to the shorter elastic. I should mention that I have come across velcro that doesn't want to stick to hot glue, so in that case it's worth sanding the back of the velcro to help it stick better, like I did just a couple seconds ago. Now glue those elastics to the top sides of the quease, in the same way that you did for the pole lane. And our last elastics are both 10 cm strips, with 4 cm of scratchy and 5 cm soft. And those will go at the bottom of the greave. And that's some finished leg armor. Now it's just a matter of strapping them onto your legs, and the next time you go for a walk, you don't have to worry about your legs getting chopped off. Okay, now it's time to protect your arms. If you want to go simple and easy, you could just make a bracer. Or if you want to go more complicated and more epic, you can make the whole arm. We'll start off with simple and easy, so I'll show you how to make the bracer first. Start by tracing the pattern and cutting the main shape out of 6 to 8 millimeter foam. Now go back to your pattern and cut out the diamond and the swirly bits as well. You actually only need to cut the swirls on one side because you can always flip the pattern over to trace the other side. Then you can line up your pattern and trace those swirls and the diamond onto your bracer. We're doing this just to make it easy to line up all the pieces when we go to glue them in the end. And look at this, flipping the pattern over to trace the swirls on the other side. How efficient. Now let's trace those swirls and diamond on a sheet of 2mm thick craft foam. And I know you're wondering, can't I just trace one swirl four times? And the answer is no. Those two swirls are different sizes to fit properly on the bracer. You can, however, trace the two swirls two times. That's okay. I like to label the matching sets A and B so I know which ones were traced right side up and which ones were upside down. Helps avoid confusion later. And some more careful not cutting your fingers off cutting. Now heat up your bracer and roll it up into a little roll to make it hold its rolly form. Hold it all rolled up until it's totally cool so that when you release it, it'll stay in that shape. Now you can glue on your 2mm craft foam sheets, lining them up with the marks that you made earlier. They won't necessarily fit right on the lines exactly because you have curved the bracer, but they should come close. It's a good idea to do any cleanup on the center diamond before you add the swirls because there's just more space to do it right now. And then it's time for some swirl gluing and a 7mm wide strip of craft foam all around the outside finishes it off nicely. For going around those tight corners, you can heat the strip up a bit, and it's amazing how sharp a curve you can actually get. Once you're back where you started, cut the two ends flush, and you're done. All that's left is to sand a couple spots on the inside, and glue a couple short strips of elastic across the opening on the bracer. Then you can put it on, and feel super strong. Alright, that's it for the bracer. Obviously, you'll probably want to make two of them. Or you can keep watching and make the whole arm. The arm is made up of three parts, the bam brace, the rear brace, and the cooter. Trace the arm pattern on some EVA foam, making sure to mark all the alignment marks and the hinge marks. The cooter, or elbow section for each arm, is made from two pieces. So for each elbow, first trace piece 20 with the fan section attached, then cut it off on the dotted line and trace piece 20 again. I call it 20B. Now you can cut out all your pieces with your sharp, sharp knife. Grab a 4mm leather punch and twist it like crazy until you've punched holes everywhere that holes are supposed to be punched. Heat up your glue gun and start gluing the two elbow pieces together, one with a flap and one without. If you've been making the whole armor costume, I'm assuming you know how to glue things together by now. So I won't keep talking about how you have to line up the alignment points, glue small sections at a time, and make sure to hold the sides together until it completely cools. Or how you can glue it inside out and then flip it right side out. Heat up the side with the fan on it, being careful not to melt the glue of the center seam, and use your thumb to form a little valley in the fan. A fan valley. You can also use your fingers to stretch the foam a little bit, kind of in the center of each piece. And flip up the outside edges. 
for style. Now glue pieces 18 and 19 together to make the front half of the rear brace. Start at one edge and make sure the alignment points are lined up as you go along. Now you can glue the rear of the rear brace, piece 17, onto the front of the rear brace. You might find you need to stretch piece 17 just a little bit to get the alignment marks to line up, and that's okay. That's how it's supposed to be, I think. Once one edge is glued, turn it right side out and glue the other edge. And there you go, you made a rear brace. The VAM brace, or the part that guards your forearm, is made by gluing pieces 15 and 16 together. Gluing this is pretty straightforward, glue one side, turn it inside out, and then glue the other side. And that's a VAM brace. You're welcome, forearm. If you're into things being nice and smooth, now would be a good time to clean up the seams by rubbing them frantically with some foam. Also, now would be a good time to check to make sure they fit. Make sure to try them over top of whatever you're going to be wearing underneath them. Apparently, I'm going to be wearing an orange fuzzy sweater under mine. If everything looks good, you can cut some 7mm wide strips of craft foam and glue them around the outside edges of the elbow piece. You may need to use some heat to convince that strip that it really does want to go around some of those tighter corners. Cut. Cut. We'll also glue a strip at the cuff end of the van brace, starting at the bottom center and going all the way around. Not only does it add a little more detail, it also strengthens the ends of the two seams on the sides of the van brace. Now it's time to put it all together with some pivoting hinges. If you don't already know how to do this, make sure to check out my video on pivoting hinge rivets. I'll have links in the description. If you notice the back edges of the van brace or rear brace rubbing against the inside of the elbow, you can heat them up and curve them inward so they don't rub anymore. Or you could also just trim a little bit away. That would work too. Once everything is working well, you can cut and flare the other end of the rivets. I'm using the back end of a drumstick here because it's just the perfect shape and size. Okay, the arm's ready to go, but it can have a tendency to drop down on your arm and pinch the bit of skin on the inside of your elbow. So we're going to add a strap connecting it to the breastplate to hold it up. So grab some 2cm wide webbing and glue a 5cm strip of scratchy velcro on one end on one side and a strip of fuzzy velcro on the same end on the other side, which allows it to be sandwiched between the velcro on the shoulders of the breastplate. You can get a beautiful helper to mark where the strap overlaps the top edge of the arm. High five for some great helping out. Cut the webbing about 5 centimeters below that mark and then cut a 5 centimeter strip of fuzzy velcro and a 5 centimeter strip of scratchy velcro. Now glue the scratchy velcro to the outside of your arm and the fuzzy strip to the end of the webbing. Make sure it goes on the opposite side of where your assistant marked the line. Now you can put it all together with the pauldron attached and the strap for the arm coming out from the shoulder. It's a little awkward putting it all on by yourself but it is possible. I think there's a reason knights had people helping them put their armor on. Of course you could leave your armor like this because it looks pretty cool already, or you could paint it. Now it's a lot easier to paint if everything isn't riveted together already. Here you'll see me unriveting all my rivets so I can take the pieces apart. That's why I keep mentioning it in the little pop-ups in the video. Make sure to mark the parts so you know how to put them back together. Then you can paint it black. I tend to use artists acrylic paints. They're reasonably flexible without getting too crazy expensive. The more money you spend, the more flexible paint you can get. So it's up to you. I give my projects three coats of black paint, waiting for them to dry completely between coats. I even make a little mark for each coat I paint just so I can keep track, cause black kinda looks like black. If you're planning on making black and red armor, you'd be almost done. All you need to do is paint the accents red. I was super tempted to paint my armor like this cause black and red is my favorite color. I also tried out a few other color combinations and thought I'd share them with you just so you can get an idea of different options for your paint job. I ended up choosing to go with all silver and a gold unilion. Grab a cardboard cereal box that has no brand name showing for copyright reasons, grab your metallic paints, and put on a rubber glove. My favorite silver color right now is a 50-50 mix of DecoArt Metallics silver and pewter colors. Using your gloved finger, take a tiny little paint and then rub most of it off on some clear cardboard. Now very gently apply the paint onto your armor in a circular rubbing motion. Repeat this process over and over and over again until you don't want to see silver paint ever again in your life. If you're planning on painting a contrasting color on the edging, try to get as little silver on there as possible. Although you will get some, you'll just have to paint black over it again to cover it up. If you're just painting it all silver, you can just paint it all silver. The thing about this technique is you're not trying to get right into the corners and edges. That's why we use a finger, because it just can't. Instead it gives you kind of an antique effect, which also helps to show off the details. If you do get some silver too far into the corners and don't like how it looks, grab a tiny little bit of black paint, rub most of it off on some paper, and then just dab it along the edge. 
I want my Unilion to look gold, because it's special. So I'll paint over any parts that accidentally got silver on them. Then I'll take my vintage brass paint and goldenate my Unilion. If you're planning on doing the trim gold, now would be also the time to do that. I'm not. I'm doing mine silver. Oh yeah, and don't forget to paint the straps on the arms too. I painted mine brown to look like leather. It's not super necessary to seal your paint, but it'll probably make it last longer. I'm trying something a little bit different. I'm using Plaid FX's primer as a sealer. I'm not sure how that'll pan out, but I guess I'll see. Once the paint's dry, you can rivet all your pieces back together for good. And depending how pedantic you are, you might want to paint those rivets black and silver. Now you can Velcro your armor all back together, put on a sexy sweater you got at the thrift store that looks a little bit like chainmail, and squirm your way into your armor. All right, there you go, some knight armor you can be proud of. And what I really love about this knight armor is its modularity. For example, say you didn't like your pauldrons and wanted a different pauldron. Magic. You could just magically swap it out for something spikier. Or if you didn't like your breastplate, you could change your breastplate. Maybe you don't want a unilion on your breastplate and you want a narwhal for your favorite sandwich. As of right now, when I release the video, I only have one size, size Chris. Um, however, I will be releasing more sizes, some kid sizes and a larger adult size. Stay tuned for that. If you're watching later, they may already be there. And if you've already bought the pattern, they will be added to your pattern for free with updates. Even though there is only one size, the good thing about this pattern is it's really adjustable. It fits my son, Sam. It fits my wife, Lorinda. It doesn't quite fit Isabel. And it's not too hard to say, like, just lengthen the shoulder straps to make the breastplate bigger. Even though it's one size, it is still lots of sizes, if you know what I mean. I'm also thinking I'd like to make a more female breastplate if there's enough interest. So if you think that's a good idea, make sure to leave a comment in the comments so I know that people want to see that and then I will make that happen. And I'm also including the night helmet, which is already a pattern, but I'll include it with this pattern so that you have the whole thing. Don't forget this pattern is part of my ultimate everything super value bundle, which is all my patterns that I've ever made and any foam patterns I make in the future, all for a really, really good price. Uh, what else? If you're wondering if you can sit in this armor, the answer is yes, you can. I made it so you can sit down, which is handy if you like sitting down, which I do. All right, I'm done. Thanks for watching. See ya. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's caught my blouse. <laughs> Stuck everywhere. <laughs> I cannot see. Do some night moves. <laughs>